Hello, and welcome to a very special 8-minute demo video series. Today, we're going through a video tutorial on OIS 6.3 Advanced Workflow Design and Best Practice Video Shorts. Yep, these are going to be smaller videos on specific topics. And the topic we're going to talk about right now is Complex Link Logic. Alright, so let's take a look at what we mean by complex link logic. Now, we all know that Opalis is essentially a set of objects and links between those objects, and the process that we want is dictated by the logic that we put in the workflow. So, between two objects, we have a link. And the data from this object passes through this link in order to get to this object and then whatever that object does it generates data and then so on and so forth. So let's generate some parameters here and I'll just leave it parameter 1 and parameter 2 and then we have the link and then of course we have the send platform event and we'll just do information we'll subscribe to parameter 1 and subscribe to parameter 2. Alright now by default if we don't do anything in the links, as long as the first object is successful, we'll get the data passed to the second object. So we're just going to test this out and pass some data and you'll see what I mean. I'm just going to run, type in hello world, and you'll see that the data will just pass from one to the next. And you can see in here, details is hello, well, summary is hello, and then details is world. No big deal. Now. This is as uncomplex of link logic as you can have. In fact, it's the default. Every link you create will have a success only link, which we highly advise against leaving that way, because that means if the object beforehand fails for some reason and you haven't modified that link, then it will just fail and the policy will not continue on. So you want to make sure you traverse every link to see what is actually evaluating because every link is evaluated every single time the policy is executed um, if it's going down that policy part of the path. So instead of just success let's add another one and we'll stack our uh, filters here. We're adding include filters. This means we are going to allow something through if it meets this criteria. And we could click on the object and we could see we have the ability to filter on the parameters that we have as well as any of the common published data. Now there's not a lot of times you're going to um, actually filter on common published data unless you're looping or looking uh, for something in that common arena. Most of the time you're going to be object specific filtering. So let's say if parameter 1 contains the value hello then we will continue and obviously from the last example if we do the same exact thing it will of course pass so if we run this and we do hello I'll do hello world this time um, tails right you see that we were able to pass both and we can see down in hello world and then the details Let's change this up a little bit. Change parameter 2 to actual integer. That way we can see in the links, if we stack another link, change it to parameter 2. Instead of the contains and the string conditions, we get actual numerical conditions, like greater than, less than, between. So let's say, is between 10 and 15. All right. Now, since we're filtering on the same object, these are ors. So if we have conditions from this first object that are met, it will pass based on the OR condition. So if it's successful, OR contains hello, OR con is between 10 and 15 for three different things. So the object is successful, parameter 1 contains hello, or parameter 2 is between 10 and 15. Now let's give something that matches all of those criteria. Obviously success is not going to be an issue there. So we'll hit run. We'll type in parameter 1 will be hello world, and then we'll type in 11. And regardless of how many of the conditions were met, we still go through because it's an or. All right. So now let's run it with different criteria that does not meet those statements. Now again, we won't be able to change the success of the custom start as that's going to be successful. So let's hit run. Parameter 1, I'll just type some random text, and then 25. We'll see what happens. And as you'd expect, because of the OR condition, this object was still successful even though we 
put in information that would not match our other criteria. Now, if we remove that, now, obviously, it's going to just be based on these conditions, and it should not pass with data that does not satisfy those conditions. So I hit Run, type some gobbledygook in there, and 45, and we should see it does not pass the link because neither of the conditions were met. Now let's just do one. Let's type in hello world and 85. And this time, because of the or condition, it's moving on. So you got to be aware that everything you add in the include will be an or. So the more things you add, the more chances it's going to move forward because it's an or. If you don't put many conditions in the include, then it narrows down the chances of the data to move past the link. Now you might wonder, well, how about the exclude tab? Well, the exclude works similarly, except it's going to look at these first and evaluate these in a, a higher priority than the include. So if we say, do not go down this path if the word hello is in there, then it will not go down this path regardless of the everything that's in the include. So you got to keep that in mind. So in this exclude, I'm going to put parameter 1 contains world. So it will not go down that link if parameter 1 contains world. And then if it doesn't satisfy the exclude, then it will go down uh, based on the other criteria in the parameters. So now, if we test this and type hello world, and something that would satisfy the second parameter, it should not go down that path. Even though it satisfied the first two includes, it also satisfied the exclude, which means that took priority and it's not going to continue. So in order to pass this, we have to actually give it something that will not satisfy the criteria in the exclude, but will satisfy the criteria in the include. So, hello there, and 12, and we should get our two objects executed, and we did. So keep in mind, in the links, we have ORs on the includes, and of course you could stack your exclude statements with ORs, but they are AND conditions between include and exclude, and on top of that, the exclude is evaluated with higher priority than the include, because anything you put in the exclude means we do not want to pass if this is satisfied. I know that can get confusing. So I'm going to remove the exclude stuff. And I recommend only using exclude if you absolutely have to, or if you have a, a good understanding of how it works, because you can get frustrated with why isn't anything moving down these paths. Now, one of the things that you would use links for is branching. And in this, we're just filtering. So one object filtered out um, items to go to the second object. But what happens if we want to branch? So I'm just going to copy and paste, so I keep my links. And when you do copy and paste like that, the link logic stays. So you can keep, it's easier to edit when you're making you know, binary decisions. So this one obviously is our old one, contains hello, is between 10 and 15. And for this one, we're going to do does not contain hello, because we want to be the opposite. And instead of between 10 and 15, we're just going to do less than 10. Obviously, it will, anything below 10, it'll, it'll be satisfied. And anything that does not contain hello will go down this path. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Oh, and this object will remain consistent with the other object if you copy and paste. I will rename this one. All right, so I'm just going to step over this time so we can watch it happen. So parameter 1, I'm going to do hello. So it will go down the first one, but it won't go down the second one. And in here, we're going to do 11. So obviously, this should just go down one direction to the right for that one. And that's it. Now, if we satisfied something on both links, like hello and 9, because they're or conditions, you're going to go down that path and the other path because you've satisfied both link conditions. And this might be an opportunity where you want to use exclude on each of the links so they're exclusionary. If we do something that's strictly for the bottom link there, the other, the other link and object, like world and one, 
then it should not go down the first one, but it will go down the second one. All right, that's branching, but with a binary decision, sort of, because unless you're aware of exactly what's going to be going on these links, it's possible that you're going to satisfy both links. So let's put an exclude statement in this one where it will not go down this field if parameter 1 is between 10 and 15. So you'd want to do the opposite logic. You want the exact logic in the exclude on the second link as you have as the include on that first link. So we got to do both of those. So let's take a look. That was a between and contains hello. So on this second link, in the exclude, we're doing parameter 1 contains hello. And parameter 2 is between 10 and 15. And this is in the exclude on the, I'm going to name these links, second option. And for the first option, we don't have anything on the exclude right now, but the include matches the exclude for the second option. So let's see what happens when we test this. All right. So we want hello and 9. And it should just go down this first path here because it's, at le it's satisfying at least one include here. And though it satisfies an include down here, it also satisfies an exclude. And that's that. So be aware of what your links are doing at any given time and be sure you name them so you know what's going on. Now in this example, it's just you know a silly example, so I didn't name them great. But usually it's going to be pass, warning, failed, or specific status types, or things like that. So keep that in mind. Now because every link is evaluated each time, we can have as many links out of one object going to as many other links as you want. So if I have a third option here, and keep in mind you can add colors to keep them straight based on status or whatever you want. And I'm going to remove the exclude stuff from this one, because in this one I want it to be parameter 1 contains something very specific like my name. That way I know this is so specific it's only going to go down this path. I might not might even want to name these third and maybe second as opposed to other since we're dealing with three things and maybe first up here and of course we could add colors as needed green and red or blue based on whatever your needs for your process are so let's go and test this and we'll run it through a series of different things so first we're going to do Charles and one and we could, as a test question, it should go down the second one and the third one. So it did second and third. All right, we can see that in the logs. So if I run this again, hello five, it should just go up, down the first one. It goes, and that's it, because we have the exclusionary on the second option. Now if we do Charles 13, it will go down the first one and the third one because include statements were met for both and, and no includes or excludes were satisfied for the second one well I guess exclude for the second one was met but obviously <laughs> that doesn't really matter since we weren't including anything alright so that is a very quick and probably confusing I apologize if it's that confusing look at complex link logic the important things to take away here are uh, you can have as many links out of one object to other objects as you want and each link is evaluated separately. Each one of those links can have include and exclude. Exclude takes priority over include. So if exclude stuff is satisfied, then no include stuff will be looked at. In the options menu, uh, options tab here, you can um, provide colors. And because each link is evaluated separately, you can have links where data goes down only one, one or the other or all three or two of the three or whatever and it doesn't it all depends on the process and the and the the logic you put in now one thing I haven't put in here yet or talked about are delays and we don't really recommend putting delays in links unless it's just quick and easy for you and you don't you're not worried about it because in the logging in the ops console or even in the logs when you're running the client there's no real way to know unless you label the links that there's a delay going on it'll just look like this object ran and nothing's going on though the policy's running 
So if we put a, a delay in the first one under option, put a five second delay, and none of the others, then we run this through the test console or run it normally, then the first link there will delay five seconds before completing. So I'm going to hit step over, give it some information. Now in the upper, on the testing console, it's trying to evaluate. You can see that it waited five seconds for that to go by. Uh, so it did go down that path and then no other path because of what we gave it. So if we do hello and two, it's waiting just like it did last time and just there. And if we do Charles and four, then it should go down the second and third, but no delays because those do not have delays on them. So when this is running in the operator console, all three of these would be evaluated at the same exact time. The, f the green one here, or the first one, would be evaluated, wait five seconds if any includes were satisfied, and then the other ones would go immediately. So this is an effective way to delay certain parts of your workflow if you need. If we put a, another delay in here, now if we hit step over, And now we're still in the delay period for the second one to be, uh, for the include for the second one. The third one, I apologize. The second one's done, and we're now waiting the 15, or whatever was left of the 15 seconds for the third one to execute. And there we go, and we're done. So this is why it's very wise to label and color your object, or objects and your links. Because, and one, one thing, a best practice I use, if I put a delay in here, I put somewhere in here if it's just the the label itself or it added to an, a, the label you have I put 15 seconds in there maybe uh, delay 15 seconds and if I can afford to I put I make it purple or some other consistent color so I know any link that's purple is has a delay so this one has five second delay I can do like this and put five second or delay five seconds that way, if it looks like the policy is running but hung or something like that, then I can look at the policy and go, oh, there's delays in there, so I don't have to worry about it. The other option for delaying in a workflow is to create an object that uses sleep or some PowerShell, that essentially, which stalls the policy and, and its actual object, so you know that in the logs you're going to see that an object is, is being executed and is actually on that object as opposed to just on the link. So that should be it for complex link logic. I hope uh, this was useful and you can uh, get some use for this when you're starting to build out your more complex policies with complex branching and link logic. We certainly appreciate you watching. Thank you.